What's up, Dan Blewett here, and I wanna give you some quick context on the video and the course that you're about to watch. So this video is the cornerstone of my How to Throw a Hammer Curveball course, which I have released here on YouTube for free. So I wanted to give this out so I could translate it into other languages, number one, and just because I wanted to share it with you all. I've got great viewers and I appreciate you watching. Um, number two, a couple things to quickly know. In the description, there are links to number one, this whole course. So if you're finding just this video, you'll find the whole playlist in the description. And two, there's a PDF that accompanies this, that it gives you learning objectives. It gives you a big checklist of things you should know and should be able to do uh, to have the best curveball possible. It also gives you a download for a 14 page PDF that will guide you through this whole process. In addition, there's also another secret playlist of pitching drills, which are what I recommend to take all these uh, lessons and grips and different uh, variations and stuff you're gonna learn in the course, a way to assemble that into a, a throwing progression. So if you want more throwing drills and you want this PDF that accompanies the course, you can find that in the description below. All right, I hope you enjoy this video and I hope this course helps you have the best season ever. Hey, Dan Blue here. Let's go over curveball grips. This is going to be a fun chapter to kind of go over here. So, number one, we got five grips standard knuckle curve, the finger pointing up, fingers crossed over, and the fingernail dig. Uh, those are just five different sort of placeholders for your index finger. So, let's just jump right into this. So, the standard grip, as you can see here, this big photo, it is just it's just honestly like a fastball grip uh slightly offset to the side so let's pan uh to me big here so you can see so basically if you're looking at uh the baseball i got my thumb underneath the index or the uh the seam here my middle finger is right along the edge so i'm holding it with the horseshoe like this and my middle finger slides in just like that and then my thumbs underneath and these two fingers just like that. So this is the core. These four are pretty much unchanging in all these grips. All right. So here with the standard grip, this finger is just hanging out here. And then as you throw it, that finger is going to stay relaxed and not put pressure through the center. So the thing this index finger cannot do is put pressure into the center of the ball. If we do that, it's going to reduce the amount of pressure we get as we catch the baseball like this. This finger should do nothing. This finger should catch the baseball really well. And the thumb sort of comes up to assist it like that. That's how we're helping to align spin as we get forward to the front of the ball. And understand you can't actually get out in front like this. Your fingers will sneak to the side of the baseball and then they'll try to their best to sort of align the spin as you come back through. So the standard grip is just this. And this is actually the same grip as, a, as you throw a slider. And it's, uh, it's not really the same as you throw a cutter but it's really only a little bit different than a fastball. But again, the hand action is what makes the most difference. You can pick any grip that a big leaguer throws and you're not just going to automatically throw it like he does. Uh, but all these different grips just tinker with them a little bit. So you have five choices here today, really. And it's up to you to kind of figure out which one produces the best results. And that's going to be a combination of your feel for it and uh, what your throwing partner says, like, hey, that one's sharper. Like maybe you do the knuckle curve grip and it's a sharper pitch. But the grip doesn't make the pitch by any means. A knuckle curve is no better. It's no worse than any other curveball grip. When someone says, oh, I, he's, there's a wicked knuckle curve, it's just the way he holds his fingers. It's not a different pitch. A curveball is a curveball, and it's really a curveball because of the spin. So the next grip, uh, again, we cover this. Uh, the, again, the constant here is the middle finger placement. So remember, with all these grips, middle finger placement is critical. And then here's the knuckle curve. So you can see here that we are taking our our index finger and shoving against the ball, kind of looks like a gooseneck or something, I don't know. But from the top, looks like this. From the, the front view or whatever view you'd call this, looks like this. And this is just gonna help us maybe kind of aligns the ball a little better. I don't really know the advantages of it. Uh, you can throw it, it may be more comfortable or less comfortable than you uh, for you. Everyone's different. Some guys throw it like this and they really like it. Other guys throw it like this and they really don't like it because it just puts a little tension through your finger and all that stuff. Uh, commonly, it's a misconception that you'll actually push or something. That doesn't actually happen. Uh, your hand's moving too fast and that's not the same direction as the spin. The spin direction would be this way, so to push that way wouldn't really do anything. 
but this can kind of act as a guide potentially as you come through to help guide the ball into, this, into the right direction. Again, I think it's really more of a comfort thing. And uh, it's again, it's going to be up to you and your throwing partner which one produces the best results. Okay, so the finger point uh, made famous by Adam Wainwright, obviously. This is just, a, again, it's a placeholder, and you just don't want this on the ball to screw it up by putting pressure through the center. So when your finger's pointed up, it's definitely not doing that, right? And then one thing, it can be an easy cue to try to like point that finger towards the catcher. Granted, this is not how a curveball is actually released. Again, your fingers, as you come through and accelerate, they go around the side of the ball and they get to the front. But mentally, it makes a lot of sense to think, get to the front of the ball, get my fingernail to the front of the ball, point my finger to the catcher. You can think things that aren't actually true in real life and get the good result that you want. I, I don't think you have to adequately explain every little nuance. Uh, as long as you mentally think, this is what I'm trying to accomplish, that's fine as long as we get the outcome that we want. So the, the, in the, the finger point can be fine if you think about getting your, your, pink, your, your finger right towards the catcher. Again, it's a placeholder. Nothing else about the grip is really changing. Okay, so after that, fingers crossed. This one, again, this will help us overload. So I'm getting, I'm stacking on top of the ball. And then this is just helping these two move as a unit. This can be a good one, depending on how long your fingers are, if this is comfortable for you. Uh, it may or may not be, but this was probably my second choice. But again, I just was, I did the standard grip. I just hung out and uh, I was really well wedged deep into this between my, my, uh, ring in my my middle finger so because i was really wedged deep in there which i recommend that you do um it just really didn't really factor in i felt like the ball was secure here i felt like this thing was kind of loaded it's really tight even though i'm not like gripping over gripping the ball so i didn't feel like this really added much benefit really for me it just sits here but for some people their fingers aren't as flexible perhaps as someone else's it might be a little tough to feel like they're stacked securely but either way just another good grip to try to, to check out. And then lastly, the fingernail dig. This can also kind of be referred to as a knuckle curve sometimes, but I think it's obvious, it's obviously very different. Uh, but again, the, the, uh, I think the, the goal behind this grip is just try to help you align your spin. So this, this index finger might sort of act as like a guardrail to try to get you to the front of the baseball a little bit better. But again, it's just a placeholder, and we know that if I'm like this, I really don't put too much pressure on the ball. It's just like somewhere to put it, and that's fine. So I'd encourage you to tinker with all these grips. Now understand, if this is your first time throwing a curveball, which I'm assuming for most of you it is, uh, this is, you know, just throwing like two curveballs this way, and two curveballs this way, and two curveballs this way, and two curveballs this way, probably not going to see a huge difference. But when you start to throw it a lot more and it starts to become pretty decent, that's when you start to tinker and maybe one becomes sharper than the other because one of these grips helps your spin line up better and you get a better spin axis or you get a higher spin rate. When you're just learning it, it's going to be muddy in general, no matter what you what grip you use. So it might not, you're, you know, you might throw all five, grip, all five grips and they're all kind of the same and that's pretty normal because until it like really starts to like take shape it's hard to know which grip is going to make those little fine tunes and really because these are all mostly the same grip again with this stuff all being constant the uh the little differences in this finger are probably only going to account for again little differences so you know when you're first learning it it's just again it's just going to be kind of sloppy kind of muddy it's not going to be great the more you throw it the better it'll get and then that's when these little tweaks will probably help. Okay, so I wouldn't stress it too much, but if you're going to tinker early with it, which I recommend, tinker based on uh, really more than anything, just how it feels. If it feels comfortable, sometimes if you spend, especially we all have different hand shape, different finger length, it feels like it's going to slip out, feels really uncomfortable. Then like maybe that's not the grip for you, and that's perfectly fine. But if they're all sort of like I could hold it either way, that's kind of how I feel about it. I could hold it any of these different ways. Well, this one kind of makes it feel different where it's like tighter and it's going to slip out a little bit. Then uh, maybe I just don't like that one. It doesn't fit my hand shape very well. But at the same time, just because it's not comfortable at first doesn't mean it's bad. Just like if you change your swing, you change your mechanics, a lot of new things that are good for you aren't necessarily comfortable at first because they're new. So don't be necessarily turned off by the fact that it's, you know, feels a little awkward at first because it, 
that's just kind of how sports are in general. When you learn new mechanics and you make changes, things are often uh, uncomfortable. But again, big takeaways from this this lecture. There's five different grips. The, the core of each grip is mostly the same. We just need a good placeholder for the index finger and a grip that hopefully feels comfortable that we can get the best possible spin rate and spin axis with, and then just tinker and figure out which one of those is right for you. That's pretty much it. All right, see you in the next one.